Hey guys, welcome back. This is your host Phil from OnTheCage.com. Today we're going to take a look at the iPhone 8 Plus. As you all know, this is one of the three iPhones that Apple has announced. There is iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. It's not an X, it's a 10. This is the largest iPhone available right now, and the bezels are pretty large as well. The top and bottom bezels are, as always, pretty large, and it has the same design philosophy since the iPhone 6. 6, 6S, 7, not 7S, but 8 all have the identical front facade. The main difference from the predecessors and this one is the glass rear panel. Unlike the metal unibody finishes, this is made out of glass which has an old FAB coating on it so you can wipe off your fingerprint or dust more easily than the other phones. But perhaps the most noticeable thing about the iPhone 8 Plus is its weight. It weighs 202 grams, that's pretty massive. And while the Galaxy Note 8 is as heavy as this one at 197 grams, this one feels a lot heavier. I don't know why. Maybe it's the width of it or maybe it's the weight balance within. But in either way, it starts to feel like a burden after like 10 minutes of watching a video on your phone. Besides the weight issue, this still is water and dust resistant, but at IP67 level, which is a step lower than IP68 that Samsung and some of the LGs have. Next up, display. The 5.5 inch of a full HD IPS panel is pretty impressive. I've always liked the screens on the iPhones and this one is no exception. The brightness is exceptional, color reproduction, great, and it also has true tone display. If you're used to iPad Pro, you should know what it is. Without the true tone display, you can see that the white in the display is different from white in real life, but you turn that on and it's gonna adjust it automatically to the surrounding color and you can see that the white colors in the real world and in the screen are matched. This was one of my favorite features in the iPad Pro and I'm really glad that this has made its way to the iPhone. But since we're talking about the iPhone 8 Plus, let's talk about the dual camera. iPhone 7 Plus has had one and this one is even better. Compared to the iPhone 7 Plus, the f1.8 main camera is definitely a leap forward. Overall photos are better with rich detail and exceptional tones. But my favorite feature is the portrait mode, which never was on the iPhone 7 Plus. Back then, photo qualities simply were not good. But with the newer lenses and the newer processing algorithm, the edge processing is a lot better and it recognizes the objects that are closer to you from the objects further away very, very nicely. But of course the new feature here is the portrait lighting. You can change the lighting, natural light, studio light, contour light, stage light, or stage light mono, and they give an artistic effect to the photo with the depth of field. And it does it pretty nicely. It, it does it pretty well. I've never thought that I'd be a fan for a dual camera on an iPhone, but I have became one. I definitely love this. The low lighting photos have definitely got better as well, although they're not the best, especially for the zoom photo with the darker lens in a darker environment. They're definitely noisy and grainy. But 240 frames full HD slow-mo is definitely a nice way to kill some time. Something that isn't as good as the rest of the camera department is that f2.2 of the 7 megapixel front facing camera. It's not exactly that good, especially in a low lighting condition and the HDR processing isn't that good. When there's a backlight, it doesn't process it very well. The highlights are often clipped off or missing. But camera isn't the only part that Apple has upgraded. The audio department has gotten better, especially with the stereo speaker. Apple said 25% increased volume compared to the processor, and I think that's true. They are louder, and the quality is as good as any other iPhone speaker. Um, it's not as spatial as some of the Android speakers are, but this still is one of the best speakers you can ever find on a mobile phone these days. That being said, I have to be clear that I'm not a fan of lack of 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There still isn't that much lightning connector headphones and you still cannot charge and listen to your music in the same time unless you have that chunky, expensive Belkin built adapter. But I'm pretty sure that Apple couldn't care less because it seems like they're selling tons of AirPods. The Bluetooth headsets that also can be used on the phones with the headphone jack. Aha! Uh -huh. But perhaps the most impressive part is the chipset. It's got Apple A11 Bionic with the neural engine built in and um, CPU benchmark scores are crushing all of the Android phones available today. But to be honest, it doesn't really feel that fast in real life. And especially I've seen some cluttering on the animation. Maybe there was a little hiccup in the operating system, but I hope that gets better through the software update.
And talking about the software, it gets shipped with the iOS 11 installed, and the biggest change for me is the customization on the control center. You can go into settings, control center, customize controls. You can add, remove the controls on this bottom half on the screen. But the better part is that they are utilizing 3D Touch a lot better than they ever did. You can 3D Touch on the icons over here, on the groups, and you can see more information right there, especially some useful ones like the turning night shift or true tone on and off, and you can control the flashlight level right away, or you can launch a camera to take selfie right away. I'm not a fan on that new Wi-Fi and Bluetooth algorithm where it doesn't really turn off the Wi-Fi but just cut off your current connection, but some people do like it, so I guess it's gonna depend on your taste. There is a new Files app, which is not exactly like a file explorer that you would think in Windows, Mac, or like the Android, but rather it's just a file storage that is shared upon apps. It's, it's a bit different. And truth be told, I'm not really a fan of iOS that much, at least on a phone. And uh, there, there are too much limitations, especially that 150 megabytes of limitations when you're trying to download an app through a cellular network. But if you're used to iOS, this is the same old iOS that you loved, and it's faster, it's smooth, and most importantly, it just works. And with that many features, what about that battery? The battery capacity has actually shrunk. And surprisingly enough, the battery performance has actually gotten better. Now the screen on time goes from eight and a half hours to nine hours, which is very impressive considering that I'm never on Wi-Fi, I'm always on LTE network, and I surf web all the time, that drains a lot of battery. So if you're more of a lighter user, then you should be able to gain two full days since I was able to get a day and a half on this one. Something that I'm not as happy is the charger. It gets bundled with the 5 watt charger, which is totally insane for an expensive phone like this. And with that very charger, topping off this phone is gonna take almost three full hours. And yes, there is a new feature, wireless charging through that glass back panel, and you can use any of the standard Qi wireless charger. That includes your Samsung one as well. And that is going to take a long time as well. It currently supports five watts of charging. Apple has stated that they're gonna update it to support up to 7.5 watts, but with that capacity, it also takes almost three hours to charge this one. Thankfully, fast charging is also available first ever in iPhone history at your own expense, extra expense, and at your surprise, overall charging time isn't much different, but it charges up to 50% within half an hour. I guess that's what counts. And now we're almost done with our journey. It's the verdict time. The iPhone 8 Plus is a great phone. It's got a terrific display, nice camera, artistic, nice little camera, loud stereo speaker, and excellent battery life. This is one of the best phones that Apple has ever built and one of the best phones that you can get in the market right now. If you're not a fan of the iPhone X notch design and if you absolutely not want to spend $999 on a phone, then iPhone 8 Plus is going to be a great alternative. It's, it's a very well-made phone. But to me, the iPhone 8 Plus feels like an obvious downward compatible device to an iPhone 10. Yes, it is $250 more expensive, but it does have exciting new features and especially the exciting new design. Although the lack of Touch ID is going to turn some people away. So that is the Apple iPhone 8 Plus. A great phone that is inevitably undervalued because of its fancier sibling. Thank you always for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment. You can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, and we'll see you guys later. Ciao.